Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist, DT, from weatherist.com, the colonel of confusion, the cabinet of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's Friday evening, 9 p.m., 6 p.m. on the West Coast. Lots to talk about this week in weather. Let's get right to it. So uh, first, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. This is a picture of the first Tyrannosaurus Rex greeting the um, pilgrims here in North America back in 1620. That's how we celebrate Thanksgiving in my house with uh, prehistoric monsters. So hopefully you do that same thing the nice traditional way. We'll talk about some topics here. First, the big East Coast winter storm for the 27th. Why it's not really an East Coast snowstorm. It's a mountain snowstorm. What we know, what we don't know about this event coming up. Uh, we'll talk about the Siberian snow cover battle, which is developed a bit of a part two here. The Arctic Oscillation versus the Western Pacific Oscillation and why the forecast for the positive AO is in trouble. And then also the potential change coming up here, which may split the Arctic Oscillation and force it to go negative. So let's get right to it. This first map here is from uh, November 11th. And what I wanted to point out here was a couple of different important features. A lot of people went for a really warm November, and so did I. I got to tell you. And we did that because we had um, a positive NAO, positive Arctic Oscillation, and the EPO was positive, which means that we had a trough on the West Coast and a ridge here. So all these features told us it was going to be a warm pattern, and uh, that's why everybody was calling for that. But as you can see, we've already had three Arctic blasts, and we'll have a fourth one coming in after the storm So uh, for Thanksgiving weekend. Now, one of the reasons why this has changed is because this feature has moved. Uh, this feature here, which was the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, has now moved from here over to here. And this is no longer an Eastern Pacific Oscillation. It's now the negative WPO. And what that does is that's causing the, the uh, jet stream to change. Normally, when the Arctic Oscillation is very strong like this, it has lots of lines around, as you can see, and all the cold that gets trapped up underneath it. But here we're getting cross-polar flow. You see this? Let me clear it out so you can see it again. Here we can see cross-polar flow developing. As you can see like this, and that's why the cold air is building up in Canada, even though you have a positive Arctic oscillation. And a lot of people have missed it. There's our surface map for 7 o'clock this evening. You can see the Arctic front coming south. The two fronts, very impressive there. Here's our temperature change map. Look at these temperatures collapse in Texas in particular. And then also there's uh, another buildup of cold air here, which is going to be the second Arctic blast coming in on the 28th, 27th and 28th of November after the Thanksgiving storm. So, um, and this here is the map from November 18th. You can see at this point here that the uh, EPO is now completely over here. It's now completely Western Pacific Oscillation. You can see that completely and um, very impressive indeed. And that's changed in the pattern because look what's happening here. And again, you can see it's now, we're now developing cross polar flow here. See this? See this? See the lines coming in this way? That's what's changed. That's why November's turns so much colder. A lot of people missed it. A lot of meteorologists out there missed it. This is a GFS from last night. Very impressive run. Many have seen this before. The storm goes bonkers here by 7 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Now, this is, remember, up until this, the last 16 runs of the GFS had the system going out to sea. Now, suddenly, the model goes, oh, I have a clue. And it bombs it out into a very impressive storm by the morning of Thanksgiving. Very strong winds, huge snows up and down the Appalachian Mountains, even into the cities. Very impressive-looking system. Uh, this is the snow map for the GFS. The, even though the model actually had the precipitation going over the snow in the big cities of I-95, as you can see, most of the snows over the mountains, nothing accumulates in the cities. That's because it's so darn wet. There's going to be two, three inches of rain here with the system, folks, in a lot of places. And we need the rain. But that much with warm temperatures and uh, a lot of rain and subtly, subtly winds, you're not going to get any accumulating snow. For the I-95, for the Appalachians, this is a big snowstorm. I said that four days ago. I'm still saying it. There's no reason to change it. That's what this feature looks like to me, and I'm sticking with that. And to show you a comparison, let's look at an event in the past. This is the December 19th and 20th significant East Coast snowstorm. For those of you that don't remember it, this is what the maps look like. Low is in the south. They're over the delta. Big high over Quebec, Canada, over Montreal. They developed bombs out on the 19th of December 2009, heavy snowstorm. This is the snow map. Not much for New York, as you can see in here, right? Not much for Boston, but lots of snow all up in this whole area down to Richmond, 10 to 20 inches uh, from Richmond westward all over to Roanoke, D.C. Got hammered. Big, big snowstorm, the first of several for that winter. But and I wanted to point this out because you can see some, we can learn some features from it. This is the upper air map setting up the snowstorm for December 19th. And we can see, again, some important features here. 
We have a 50-50 low. We have a negative NEO. We have a negative Arctic oscillation. We don't have that this time, and that's one of the reasons why this is not a snowstorm. If we look at the actual jet stream map, it's not loading up here. Here we go. The jet stream map, um, we can see our 50-50 low here over southeastern Canada. See it? Big ocean low right here. Ne negative NAO, the Greenland block. And again, look how we do not have lots of circles here. See that? We don't have that here. What we have is nice diffuse, so it's a negative Arctic oscillation. And this is the jet stream map. Um, there's the system. There's the Mississippi River. The blue line is the Mississippi River there. And what happens is, of course, that the energy comes down this way and then goes over this way because we have a 50-50 low and a negative NAO and a negative Arctic oscillation. So the storm has to go here and it bombs out and everybody gets a snowstorm. Yay! There you go. That's exactly what happens. The system goes negative between the Mississippi River and the Appalachian Mountains. Classic East Coast snowstorm pattern. So those are the features we're looking for. Now, this is the European model from early Friday morning. We can see the big low over Georgia and the Arctic front coming southward. Very impressive cold air coming out of here. See this? Boom, boom, boom. Wow, look at this. Look at these winds. Woo! And the Euro European, again, shows two lows, one here and one here. And again, it flashes over to snow before it ends. That's what the European is showing, and we can see it very nicely. Yeah. Uh, now, this is the European model, how we're doing it from this morning. Again, you can see um, very important features here. There's our southern low, southern system. There's a the northern system. But look over Canada. We got none of the features we need to see for an East Coast snowstorm. None. Zero. That's why it's a rainstorm. Now, the system bombs out into phases here. Sure, absolutely. You can see it. The fifth system phases. Okay, but the strong south winds ahead of it, and the cold air comes in behind it. That's a great Appalachian snowstorm track. And the European model shows that. Look at the big snows for the mountains. It also has some snow in the I-95 cities. I think that's wrong. Um, but it has a huge snowstorm for the Appalachian Mountains. Very impressive, as you can see. Is the European Ensemble, which is even more impressive. Instead of having two lows, as you saw back here, it now has the European Ensemble, as you can see, has one big low. And the rain snow line is off the coast here, so it has heavy snow in portions of Virginia already, maybe even Richmond, according to this, if this is right. A significant snow for several hours in Maryland, eastern Pennsylvania, New York, New England. Uh, and look at these winds, just howling winds. Wow. Uh, this is right. But this is the early Friday morning European, not the current one. So let's take a look at the current one and see what that's showing. Now, this is the GFS from this afternoon, or midday run, I should say. And again, the morning run was taking the low off the coast, and now the afternoon run takes it out to sea. So everybody says, well, we don't know what's going to happen. We're uncertain, blah, blah, blah. Well, if they look at the GFS ensembles, you'll see that the purple lines here represent the operational run, but all the ensembles are way up in here, as you can see, up in the coastal areas, much closer to the coast. So that's how this is telling us that the GFS ensembles and the operational run do not agree, and the operational run should be discarded. Here's the European for uh, the afternoon run. And again, look, two specific low areas, low pressure here. You see this? One here, one here. Look at Boston's temperatures, plus 8 at 850. New York City is plus 4. Wow, that is some warm stuff coming up here. There's the rain snow line way over the Appalachian Mountains, and you can see it very nicely. And then by the morning of uh, Thanksgiving, it's uh, moving off the coast, and the whole event has ended. And so the G, this again, this is how the European is doing this, as you can see very nicely. It's got there's the southern system here, but again, look over Canada. No 50-50 low, no Greenland block, and a positive Arctic oscillation. That's not the pattern you want for an East Coast snowstorm, folks. Sorry, not happening. A bomb there again. Again, look over Canada. The two systems are phasing, as you can see, but again, over East, no no 50-50 low, no Greenland block, or negative NAO, and no Arctic oscillation. Not a good setup. The European uh, this afternoon still has snows in the mountains, you can see. Also some snow in central Virginia. I'm not exactly sure where that's coming from, but it has it. The European ensembles, big Appalachian snowstorms, not much on the coast. Uh, into the Virginia and uh, Maryland Piedmont, two to four inches of snow there all the way down to Roanoke. Uh, again, it's a nice early season snow, very big for the Appalachians, not a huge surprise here.
Now, the snow dispute over Siberia <clears throat> uh, has acted up again here a little bit. Uh, this came out from the Capitol gang yesterday. Dr. Judo Cohen, the guy who developed the snow Siberian connection, showing that big early snow cover in October alters the Arctic oscillation phase during the winter months, forces it to go negative, so you end up getting cold and snowy winters. That's what his discovery was. And what's happened is that he's found a problem with the method in that he has two indexes. One is the SCE, snow extended coverage extent. The other one is the SAI, snow advance index. And usually every year so far, they've matched. This year, the divergent. So the first time in 40 years, he doesn't know what to make of it. So uh, that's why this is significant, because it may be that the huge snow cover buildup in South in, 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 or in Siberia is playing a bigger role than the actual advance and then retreat of the snow cover. So that's what the issue is. Now, this is the European model here for 10 days out. <clears throat> As you can see, much of the country has warmed up nicely, or at least moderated a little bit. Look, there's some cold air still in the northeast, but look at the warm, mild air in here. But look at all the severe cold developing up in that area. So the pattern is just reloading. It's not breaking down. And if you can't see this, let me point it out to you. This is 1053, folks. That's a big-ass high up in this area. Woo! That's cold. And that may be coming down again for the next shot later on in December. And we can see the day 9, 10 models here. This is the European day 9 GFS on the right-hand side. And again, the W, you see the negative WPO driving northward into Alaska and beginning to impact the western portions of the Arctic Circle. And what that does is that's forcing the Arctic Oscillation to begin to move. And we can see that has implications further down the road. Now, this is the GFS Ensemble Day 6. We can see, again, clearly the Western Pacific Oscillation very nicely there. And here's the Arctic Oscillation. See it centered? Look at all the lines around this thing. Again, you can see that's how you can detect the Arctic Oscillation is positive. Look at all the lines around it. Very, very intense. But what happens here is that that begins to change as the Western Pacific Oscillation comes in. Now, all, this, all the uh, indexes are showing the Arctic Oscillation is dropping, going towards negative. The NEO is going towards negative. The PNA staying neutral. Why? And the Western Pacific Oscillation tanks. Now it's very negative. Now four days, seven days, 10 days, 14 days. Why? What's it doing? Well, when the Western Pacific Oscillation is positive in December, it brings very warm conditions to the eastern United States. But remember, we're negative, not positive. So the signal is reversed, and you end up getting extreme cold over the eastern United States. And what that does is, well, that allows us to release the Arctic Oscillation. You remember the movie, Release the Kraken? Well, here we go. Release the Arctic Oscillation, the negative one. And let me show you how that happens. The buildup of the omega-shaped W negative Western Pacific Oscillation into the western circle of the Arctic, west side of the Arctic Circle is going to do two things. It's going to split the Arctic Oscillation in half and it'll force it to go over to negative. Let me show you how that happens quickly. Now, this here is the GFS at day 10. You can see the ridge developing nicely. And the Arctic Oscillation is still very strong right in here. But this is coming up this way, and that's what's causing the pattern to begin to change. This is the European at day 10, as you can see it very nicely. And again, look how intense the Arctic Oscillation is. Look at these lines right here. See this? Look at these lines around this thing. It's massive. Look at these things. But this thing is coming up, and that's going to cause the pattern to change. Now, the extended, the control run at 240 hours actually has the block building in the Arctic Circle much faster. I don't think that'll happen. But this is the ensemble at, uh, from the GFS at uh, f almost 300 hours out. And again, you can clearly see the Arctic Oscillation, but it's beginning to shift here a little bit. And the, here's the European at 360 hours out. And we can see um, very clearly the uh, strong Siberian Express coming southward. Now, the Arctic Oscillation is beginning to go this way, as you can see it. It's beginning to move out towards Scandinavia. And this is beginning to push up. And that's why it may, the pattern may begin to shift and the Arctic Oscillation may go negative. And we can see that, in fact, that the control one, it actually does that by December 7th. It actually builds all the way in there and splits the Arctic Oscillation into two pieces. Boom, boom, and the whole thing's gone negative. Now, I don't know if that's correct, but that's what it's doing. And then the uh, CFS even shows us as well, because look what happens. We now have two pieces by week four, December 17th. One piece here, another piece here. This is built up. The block over Greenland is built in this way, and this is split. And the Arctic Oscillation has now gone negative. Now, that's just one run of the CFS, one day of the CFS ensembles. I don't know if it's real, but that's what it's showing. Anyway, so that's what it looks like. This is meteorologist DT. From weatherist.com, I'll talk to you soon.